Do you have any idea how many times the little girl from the Lorax meme appears in the movie? Did you know that some characters from the Lorax appear in one of the Despicable Me movies? Hey guys, we've rounded up 25 amazing details that you definitely missed while watching the Lorax. And since keeping secrets leads to loneliness, and we want your company, we're gonna spill all the beans today. The Lorax was released in 2012, and it was the third film released by Illumination. The first one was Despicable Me, a tremendous success, and the second one was Hop, a rebel without an Easter, which wasn't bad, but didn't have as much success. We know that animated film studios love to make references to their own movies in subsequent productions. Just ask Pixar. And Illumination was no different. In the Lorax, there are references to Despicable Me. That's right, in the plural. What exactly are you suggesting? The first one can be seen on Ted's sneakers. If you pause the video, you'll see a symbol, and on it, it says Gru's Shoes, as if it were the brand of the sneakers. A clear reference to the protagonist of Despicable Me. And it's not just the name of Gru that appears on the sneakers. If you look closely, right in the middle of the logo, there's a little yellow creature with a single eye. And that's none other than our beloved minion, Stuart. And you can see it again when he's in front of the Wanslers factory. But wait, this isn't the only time we see references to Stuart. We also find a little Stuart figurine in Ted's drawer when he's getting ready to find the Wanslers, along with some other things like a nail and a battery. Pretty cool, right? If there's one thing the people of Sneedville love, it's singing and dancing. People are crazy. And they usually do it in synchronized fashion, especially in the final scene. But there's always someone who likes to be different, right? And that's why we notice this gentleman here who's dancing in the opposite direction of everyone else, and even doing these hand movements that are very 90s style. <laughs> Must be from the time when he was young. And once someone gets excited, they always stay excited. Look, here he is again, with new vibrant dance moves. Actually, we're not sure, but it seems to be the same character. What do you think? Leave your comments here. In fact, here he is again, appearing once more, but many years later since that scene was when the Wunzler was young, and we know that by now, he's old. Some very similar characters also appear at the beginning of the movie, when the Wunzler is young, and again when he's old. Like this guy, dressed all in yellow here with the town's population. Doesn't he look a lot like this guy in completely blue attire? They even look like the same person. Could they be father and son? In this same part of the movie, we see a really cool reference. Dr. Seuss is widely known for creating a series of children's characters such as the Lorax and the Grinch, who always wants to destroy Christmas. But one of the author's most famous characters is the cat in the hat. He even has a movie released in 2003. These are the ones that scare me. Yeah. And in the scene where the population goes after the Wunzler to buy a Sneed, we see a cat that resembles Dr. Seuss's character, but without the hat. The famous little girl's dance that became a huge meme on TikTok doesn't seem to be exclusive to her. We see other people doing the same move in some other scenes of the movie. And it's not just humans who like to dance in the Lorax. The forest creatures called Barbaloots also do. Even one of the Barbaloot bears follows this exotic dance style. <laughs> it's also very similar to the little girl's meme dance, shaking their booties. <laughs> Another detail you probably didn't notice is that there are only three red-haired people in the entire movie. One is a little girl from the town where the Wunzler tries to sell his Sneed, but her red hair is a bit darker. The other person is Audrey, the girl that Ted has a crush on. And the third one is none other than the Lorax himself. And not by coincidence, these are the two characters with the strongest environmental awareness in the film. The producers did this intentionally to create a visual correlation between the two characters, with Audrey's hair color matching the fur of the Lorax, both having the same shade of red. Actually, there's this crazy theory that suggests that Lorax and Audrey are the same person, can you believe it? What do you think about that? Do you think it's possible or do you think it's just nonsense? Let us know in the comments because we're dying to hear your thoughts on this. Continuing with Audrey, as we mentioned in the 10 bizarre differences between the book and the movie of the Lorax video, the character doesn't exist in the book. Check out the video. 
It's really cool too. She was created for the movie, but what's interesting is that the name Audrey is a tribute to the author's wife, Dr. Seuss, whose real name was Audrey Geisel. Not only is Audrey a tribute, but the protagonist of the movie, Ted, is also a tribute. That's because the name, Dr. Seuss, is a pseudonym, a fake name. The author of The Lorax and the Grinch, whose real name is Theodore Geisel, is nicknamed Ted, which is exactly the name of our fearless hero in the film. Another detail is that very few people noticed in the Lorax film is a small continuity error. We have one of the Barbaloots that stands out from the others by being slightly larger. In one scene, we see him dancing enthusiastically very close to the smaller Barbaloots, but in the next scene, it appears as if he has just arrived. It's a small detail, but we noticed it. When Ted is dreaming of kissing Audrey, he actually kisses a box that is supposed to be some kind of cereal box. But you know what's interesting? The MTO cereal depicted in the film is advertised as being enriched with tar oils, which would normally be a health warning. However, in the context of the movie, it is presented as a selling point. And it's not just that it seems non-nutritious, but its description is really weird. On the side, we see two pieces of information. The first one says it contains 13 addictive substances, and the second one says it has 50 radamins, which is a name that doesn't exist, but it's probably meant to replace vitamins. But why replace them? Would it be something synthetic, just like the trees in the film? Autumn, winter, and disco. <laughs> This shows how people are blind to the destruction of what is natural. It also highlights the lack of awareness of parents regarding the dangers that surround their children in the Lorax film, and makes a comparison with real concerns about sugar consumption and chemical substances. One of the most famous scenes from the film is the little girl dancing at the end. But did you know that she appears in other parts of the film too? Like when she's standing here next to these people who are singing, and then she pulls a branch from this plastic tree. From the colors of her clothes and her size, you can tell it's definitely the same character. Or when we see the radioactive lake in the city, we can spot her in the background again. We also found another detail that almost nobody noticed. In this scene, we see Ted's mother placing what appears to be an orange juice box on the table. But shortly after, we see that it simply disappears from the table. It just vanished like magic. When Ted is playing a word game with his mother and grandmother, we notice something really cool. If you take a moment to read the letters on the balls that Ted's grandmother has, we realize that it almost forms the name Lorax, with only the A missing. I guess it would be too obvious if they included the complete name, right? Another thing that draws attention in the same scene is another small continuity error, and it involves the same letter balls from the game. We see that all the balls are in front of Grandma in that same scene, but right after when it cuts to Ted, we can see that the second ball isn't there. But soon after, in the next scene, it's back there again. Then she, Grandma, grabs the second ball with the letter O. Ted's mom has a little freak out, and when we return to Grandma, she has another ball with the letter B. Another incredible detail involves that famous scene where dear Lorax leaves amidst the polluted sky and simply disappears. Interestingly, the scene was exclusively made for the 1970s animation and was reused in the 2012 film. But it doesn't exist in the book. There's only the road where the Lorax was lifted, but there's no scene where he actually floats. Still talking about the Lorax's departure, many people wonder why he had to pull his tail to float. The truth is that there is no explanation in the book or the film about it, but there is a theory that makes a lot of sense. Due to the fact that the Lorax is a kind of spirit of Mother Nature, since he speaks for the trees and the animals, when the last truffle a tree is cut down, there is nothing left no animals or trees for him to defend. In other words, the environment was completely destroyed, and his last connection to the place is literally his feet. By pulling his little tail, he lifts his feet off the ground, severing his bond with the place. He only returns when nature begins to be preserved again. A profound message indeed. Animation studios love reusing characters, after all, it saves them time and money, and Illumination was no different because they did just that. They reused a character from the Lorax in Despicable Me too. There's a police officer who appears in the scene where the population goes after El Macho to buy the Thneeds, and he's right there in the middle of the crowd. 
And in this clip from Despicable Me 2, we see the exact same character exiting a store and greeting Gru and Lucy. Lastly, we have another small continuity error in the film. When Ted goes after Wansler, he has his regular protective glasses hanging in front of his neck. Then he is literally shooed away, and we see that the glasses are turned towards the back of his neck. But shortly after, they return to their normal position. These were the 25 incredible details that you surely hadn't noticed in the Lorax. Tell us, did you already notice these details or any that we missed? Leave your comments here so that we can know. Give us a like and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the next videos. Until next time, bye bye. Time.